So whenever we start the conversation on basic rifle marksmanship, we often start talking about the M16 or AR-15 as a 5.56 millimeter handheld air-cooled gas-operated rifle with a max effective range of 550 meters on a point target. But one of the things that we very rarely, if ever, address is where these numbers come from and what they actually mean. And, and do they actually have a significance when we're talking about basic rifle marksmanship? So to start off, what I'd like to talk about is the max effective range of 550 meters. What exactly does that mean? Well, for military purposes, the uh, effective definition of that is 550 meters for a point target. So the average trained soldier is expected to be able to produce hits on a man-sized target 50% of the time. Okay, so what exactly do these numbers mean to us? Well, if we do a little bit of math on this, if I wanted to, say, take my hit probability and I wanted to improve that to 100%, what would I have to do to my target range? Now, if I want to take this 50%, improve it to 100%, I'm going to take my 550 meters, and I'm going to cut it in half. So that gives me a total of 275 meters. So for those of you familiar with the Army Marksmanship Qualification process, you, you probably already know that we shoot everything from a 50 meter target out to a 300 meter target. So 275 meters is within that 300 meters. So 275 meters has a 100% hit probability. And everything inside of that, all the way up to our 50 meter target, also, although it would actually be higher than 100%, but in reality you can't actually hit the target more than 100% of the time. So 275 meters and closer has a hit probability of 100%. So that leaves one target outside of this. That is the 300 meter target. Well, what is our hit probability of our 300 meter target? Now let's see, we're going to take 300 meters and we're going to divide that into 275 meters. Well, I know that 3 goes into 27 9 times, um, 3 goes into 5 1 time with a remainder of 2, so 3 doesn't go into 2, so 3 goes into 20 6 times with a remainder of 2, so that would be continuous 9.9166. So, we're talking about 91.66%. Okay, so 91.66%. Okay, now before we can go any farther with this, we need to understand a couple of basic marksmanship facts. Um, let's start with minute of angle. Now, a minute of angle is simply a geometric measurement. It's uh, very similar to uh, degrees or mils, um, but we like to use minutes of angle because for shooting purposes they work out really neat for us. Now I have a little representation over here. So I've got a an angle. Okay, so we know angles are derived by chopping up a circle into pieces of pie, right? Okay, so here I've got my little shooter laying here, and he's uh, built his little position. And uh, Now, a minute of angle is, it, we're talking about, is a bullet dispersion, or the cone of fire. So for some distance from the muzzle, how much that cone is going to open up. Now, a minute of angle happens to work out really neat because for every 100 yards, this is all approximate, but every 100 yards of distance in that, that diverging angle, so 
100 yards and at 200 yards and at 300 yards. Okay. So one minute of angle at 100 yards is one inch, at 200 yards is two inches, and at 300 yards it's at three inches. Okay. Now, using the M16 AR-15 standard rack grade weapon and ammo combination, this weapon system is a three MOA. Now what that means is that for 100 yards of travel at three minutes of angle that shot, shot group is going to be three inches and at 200 yards that shot group is going to be six inches and at 300 yards that shot group would be nine inches and then just for this example let's also jot down that at 600 yards that works out to be 18 inches okay now we understand our minutes of angle we understand that our rack grade weapon and ammunition combination the gun by itself is capable of producing a 9-inch group at 300 yards or an 18-inch group at 600 yards. Okay, That's the gun by itself. Now, it's also important to understand that we commonly accept that the center area of the target, i.e. a man-sized target, is about 18 inches. So for combat purposes, what we effectively do is we assign the average trained shooter a shooter error value or multiplier, which is 2. So what that means is that at a 300 yard target the gun and ammunition have a 9 inch group with a multiplier of 2 that will produce an 18 inch shot group at that distance carry that out farther to 600 yards 18 inch shot group shooter error multiplier of 2 is going to give us a 36 inch group. Now what makes this significant is that if you are firing on man-sized targets, such as our E-type silhouette that has roughly an 18-inch center chest area and you were to superimpose a 36 inch shot group over that if you were to fire one shot from a three minute of angle weapon and ammunition combination with a shooter error multiplier of two that 36 inch shot group that round should strike one of two of those silhouettes and for those of you who haven't done the math already, 600 yards roughly equates to 550 meters. Now one other small note that I'd like to throw into this is that most of us are familiar with the basic rifle marksmanship zeroing target. 
and we all know that that zeroing target has a little silhouette in the middle and then inside that silhouette there's a little four centimeter circle now the zeroing task that all soldiers are required to shoot before they go to shoot their qualification states that prior to moving their sights the shooter must fire six consecutive fired shots into a four centimeter, a four centimeter group. Now that four centimeter group could be anywhere on that zeroing target. Because as we all understand, when we zero any rifle, we are zeroing the sights to the barrel. We're making the sights point where the barrel is already pointing. So we're going to fire a four centimeter group with six shots. Now let's just say that that four centimeter group falls down here. We know that we're going to make our sight adjustments to bring it up to the zero line or down as the case may be and over to the zero line so that the shot group essentially should be moved from where it fell to the zero by zero coordinate on the zeroing target. Now there's six consecutively fired shots in a four centimeter group. That's a four centimeter group. Then the standard requires that to be zeroed we must fire five out of six consecutive shots in the four centimeter circle. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this. We have six shots fired in a four centimeter group and five of six fired into the four centimeter group. So theoretically speaking we've fired a total of 12 shots and 11 of 12 shots must be in the four centimeter group. So if I have six shots fired here, six shots fired here, I have a total shots fired of 12. Now not everybody accomplishes it in simply 12 shots but and since I fired six that had to fall within a four centimeter group and a minimum of five that have to fall inside of the four centimeter group that means I'm looking at a ratio of 11 to 12. So if I do this math and I divide 11 by 12 I'm going to find that that number comes out to 91.66 percent. Now I think we've seen this number before. I think we can see that these numbers are not an accident. So when we describe that the M16 rifle has a 550 meter max effective range with a 50 percent hit, we can understand that that means that we should be able to produce nearly 100% hits on 300 meters and closer and 50% hits at 600 yards or 550 meters. Your rifle qualification course was designed, in fact, to be easy. It was designed to be a confidence booster. So the question that we have left to answer is why don't we have a 100% hit at anything closer than 275 meters and a 91.6% hit on our 300 meters. And just for clarity, let's, let's break this down. On the qualification course, there's what? Four exposures of the 300 meter target. So I've got one, two, three, and four. 300 meter targets out there. If I hit one of them, that's 25%. If I hit two, that's 50%. If I hit three, that's 75%. So my hit probability is somewhere between hitting three and four. 50 meters through my 250 meter exposure on my qualification course, I have a 100% hit probability. 
with somewhere between three and four of my 300 meter targets. So an average qualification score on our basic rifle marksmanship qualification course should be somewhere in the vicinity of 39 or 40. To answer that question, why we don't have those kind of results? Because this 50% is the expectation of an average trained soldier. This 50% is based off of a shooter error multiplier of 2. If the average trained soldier has a shooter error multiplier of 2, then we should see routine scores of 39 and 40. If we are not seeing routine scores of 39 or 40, then the shooter error multiplier is effectively higher, which means that the soldier is not average trained. We need to take a look at how we are actually conducting our basic rifle marksmanship, primary marksmanship instruction, and figure out why we cannot meet the standards of the average trained soldier.